Yes, I don't want you to speculate on the motivation here, but I would like your thoughts uh, on the appropriateness of taking to task the intelligence community in the way that Donald Trump seemingly did on Twitter yesterday. If this is the biggest uh, problem they've got with appropriateness uh, during the, the uh, four or to eight years of uh, this uh, administration, uh, uh, they, will have, uh, they will be happy campers uh, indeed. Uh, this is a minor little blip. Uh, the intelligence business is full of uh, controversy and arguments about assumptions and, and why did you do this, why did you issue that then, what do you mean by weapons of mass destruction, on and on. And uh, um, this is, a, this is a, a hiccup. Respectfully, though, it seems like the president-elect is taking a different tone with the intelligence community than the acting president has than previous presidents have. What's the relationship supposed to be like? What's it been like historically uh, between the president and the intelligence community? Well, uh, the president uh, ought to, uh, by uh, uh, a few months, I think, into his administration, uh, have been taught a good deal by the intelligence community about how things work, uh, how reconnaissance satellites work, how signals intercepts work, uh, what, that, what limitations those put on what you can learn and what you can know. And it takes a bit of time, because some of these areas are fairly technically complex. Uh, but as you learn about them, you get to do a better job, I think, of understanding uh, what we know and what we could draw conclusions from. Uh, so it's a kind of a uh, older teacher uh, uh, student relationship, but the student is the president of the United States and uh, the holder of uh, the position that one might say is the most important or powerful in the world. Uh, so it's a different kind of relationship. The presidents, I've worked with four presidents, two Republicans, two Democrats, and uh, they've all been uh, willing to hear out uh, a different take on things. Uh, and uh, I have no reason to believe that uh, Donald Trump won't uh, uh, do the same. Uh, I think that it's, uh, it's important that the uh, uh, intelligence uh, community help the new president and not kind of sit back there and kibitz and, and, uh, and criticize. Let me take your metaphor there about teaching. I've heard past presidents talk about the immediate reverence they have for those reports that they receive on a daily basis, those, those briefings, how awesome, for lack of a better word, it is to get uh, all of that information. Again, playing out this metaphor further, is Donald Trump spending enough time uh, in class? Are you satisfied he's being briefed enough? Well, there's more than one way to run a class. You can have seminars, you can have lectures, you can have lots of things. And uh, in the two years I was director of central intelligence for uh, President uh, Bill Clinton, uh, he never had a morning briefing. Uh, he didn't like to be briefed. He didn't like to uh, have stuff read to him. Uh, he was a speed reader, uh, is, I suppose, a still a speed reader. And he liked to go through things quickly and then maybe ask some questions on the side, write a note in a, a, a book or a book of briefings. Uh, Jim, uh, this fourth point seems to me to track mm. what De Kaplan has in his new book, Have You Read It Yet? Uh, he, he, Bill Clinton did things like that all the time, which was different than sitting there and taking the morning briefing. But that's the way he wanted to work. And however the President of the United States, in this case to be for the next four years anyway, Donald Trump, wants to have information presented to him, people need to accommodate him and not kind of sit back there and just kind of grumble about it to the press. Let me return to that, that previous tweet and let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say perhaps he was uh, joking about the matter here. Uh, I wonder what you would say to somebody in the intelligence community who doesn't welcome this kind of skepticism from the president-elect, who wonders about the publicity associated with his or her job, who questions perhaps the president-elect's commitment uh, to the intelligence community and the job that it does. I'd, I'd say uh, pull yourself together and get back to work or find a different job. Uh, uh, it's, uh, intelligence is important enough, tough enough, and from time to time angry enough uh, that it's important not to get distracted by small matters. Um, you got to call it straight. If somebody comes at you, whether it's a secretary of a cabinet secretary or vice president or even the president, national security advisor, and tries to push you off a point and you think you're right, you, you address it clearly. Here's why I think this is right. Uh, and uh, it, I, I believe, based just on the, the couple of uh, meetings I've had with him, 
that Donald Trump is a fair-minded, balanced individual who talks uh, rationally, quite reasonably about uh, matters in small groups. Uh, I haven't, uh, the only time I've seen him in a big group, like mm -hmm. in front of thousands of people, uh, uh, is uh, in an auditorium, and in that he uh, is very bombastic and different kind of approach. But uh, a lot of people said they thought that was worthless and it wasn't going to go anywhere, but it got him elected president of the United States and did not elect any of the people who were skeptical. Let me go back to the campaign, if I could, Director Woolsey. I wonder what was so compelling about the case that the now president-elect made to you uh, to join his campaign, to advise him uh, on intelligence matters. What, what was it that he said to you that, that made you think that he was the man to advise? He uh, uh, he didn't uh, approach me. I uh, uh, went that summer, uh, last summer, and uh, read the, a lot of the materials that had been presented uh, uh, in connection, was, had been made public in connection with uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, pay to play and so forth. And I decided I could not support her under any circumstances. I began to look at some of the material uh, uh, on, from, from Donald Trump. I, I liked what I saw on the whole. Um, and I volunteered. Uh, he had a meeting with uh, with me and uh, my wife and uh, uh, one uh, one staffer, and uh, it uh, was a good discussion. But uh, he didn't seek me out. I just volunteered. Just a very quick last question here. I wonder where you see things going uh, from this point. I wonder if in those conversations with the now president-elect, he talked about a desire to reform the intelligence apparatus or uh, enforce maybe changes to the to the intelligence. A community, what you think is going to happen here, and if the relationship needs to be uh, uh, mended in any sort of way? Well, it's uh, hard to tell. Uh, there's been a lot of reorganization uh, out at uh, the CIA itself in the last uh, two or three years. Uh, some people are high on it; others don't like it at all. And there uh, have been uh, 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 there's been a lot of uh, uh, reorganization in the last 15 years, uh, sort of post 9/11. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, the reform setting up the Director of National Intelligence and so forth, which uh, uh, also are controversial. Some people think it was a good idea, and others think it was crazy to do it the way they've done it. So you've got a couple of sets of uh, of. Uh, disagreements boiling uh, within the intelligence uh, community and uh, you could have some important changes. It, what's important about this is to get all the issues laid out and, and have an objective assessment of them and uh, let uh, the president decide how he wants to organize his uh, intelligence community.